Well, good evening and welcome to our annual St. Stephen's Academy Evening of Fine Arts. I'm so glad that you were able to join us to celebrate the work of our students and our fine arts teachers this year. Uh, if you spent much time around St. Stephen's Academy, you know that visual and performing arts are an essential part of the education we provide. Every St. Stephen's student learns how to study and interpret and create beauty through the visual arts. And every St. Stephen's student is taught to hear and enjoy and participate in the melodies and harmonies and rhythms of beautiful music. And these are precious gifts that we want to pass on to our children, a, a rich heritage of engagement with the arts and the production and enjoyment of beautiful works of art. The pursuit and enjoyment of beauty will always be a hallmark of a classical Christian education. A few weeks ago, Dort University professor Justin Bailey published a short essay on the centrality of beauty in the Christian mission to care for and transform the world around us. If we want to make our families, churches, classrooms, and communities into beautiful, fruitful gardens, he writes, it will require much more than just trying to kill all the weeds. Rather, it requires patient, loving attention, daily diligence, and the active planting of beautiful things. Bailey explains the importance of beauty by pointing to three ways beauty transforms us. First, beauty arrests our attention. It stops us in the midst of everyday life and heightens our attention to the world around us. As philosopher Elaine Scarry puts it, it is, it is as though beautiful things have been placed here and there throughout the world to serve as small wake-up calls to our perception spurring our lapsed alertness back to its most acute levels. If our current cultural moment, moment is allergic to nuance, then regular encounters with beauty can train our powers of attention to notice things we've otherwise missed. Second, beauty redirects our desires. When we encounter beauty, we feel like we've been given a gift. We also feel the urge to protect it and to increase it. As such, being immersed in beauty rehumanizes us. It creates spaces that resist the dehumanizing forces that beset us in everyday life. Beauty reminds us of who we are and what we should love. Third, beauty elicits our delight. Why do we crave beauty? Bailey asks, just for the heaven of it. In the biblical perspective, beauty makes a claim about the world. Despite all the brokenness, the Christian story shows us that beauty is the deeper reality and that the diseased creation is being made new. Tonight, our students will be sharing beautiful music they've been learning, and they've set up a stunning collection of beautiful artwork in the lobby. <clears throat> you also notice another unique element of our program that we added a few years ago. It's called ekphrastic poetry. Ekphrastic which might sound like a description of small children when they've been given too much sugar, but it's actually a classic form of poetry that describes a work of art. Uh, the ekphrastic poems read this evening were written by our students about works of art created by their classmates, so you'll see the work of art on the screens behind me as the students read these poems. And before we go any further, I want to recognize our four fine arts teachers who, uh, who love beauty and are devoted to their students. I mentioned at the State of the School meeting that award-winning programs are a feature of mature, thriving schools. Um, not only do our students win multiple state and national art awards each year, but this year our festival choir took first place in the Oregon State Choir Competition. <laughs> Our four fine arts teachers are Kathy Meir, who leads our art department, Tiffany Gaither, our music program director, Miriam Cheney, our creative writing teacher, and Chris Akuns, our photography teacher. And I'll also include our accompanists, Mindy Cook and Dan Miller. Please join me in thanking these incredibly talented teachers and musicians. A couple of other reminders before we begin. It's important that all cell phones are silenced. I want to say forever, but we'll settle for silencing them during the concert portion of this evening. Uh, please feel free to visit the restrooms out in the lobby if you need to during the concert, but otherwise we ask that you stay in the sanctuary until we reopen the doors to the art show after the musical part of our program. Lastly, we are recording the concert portion of our evening using cameras that are much better than the camera on your phone. 
and we'll send out a link to the recording after the show. Uh, if you need to take a picture or record video, please be mindful of those around you and try not to block their view or the aisles. Uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing on our evening together. Our gracious Father, you are the eternal source of goodness, uh, the eternal source of truth, the eternal source of all beauty, and we are transformed into your likeness as we behold your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ. And tonight we have the privilege of celebrating your attributes as they're reflected in the voices and the handiwork of our students who are made in your image. We thank you for the gifts of vocal and visual art. We thank you that we can enjoy and participate in these precious gifts. And our desire is that you would be glorified in the many hours of hard work represented here this evening, and we pray that all involved would rejoice in this opportunity to celebrate the beauty of your creation in song and in word and in image. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, through whom and for whom are all things. Amen.
the beauty in the blue. Skies blue brood above the sea. Waves rise high and thunder sounds. Walls of water, steep, vast, loom large and fierce, a sight to astound. Frothy foam sprays against the rocks. Waves meet land with angry roar. Untamed by man, the ocean's power seeks to overwhelm her adversary's shore. Sea and sky, both gray and cold, cast a shadow of gloom. But there is beauty, too, a sight to behold, in the rhythm of the waves and their ceaseless boom. There the oceans threaten to consume, and the sea may seem a treacherous thing. There is wonder here, a sense of awe, and the breaking waves and the sea foams ring. Two old trees. In, an, in Alaska's icy lakes stood two old trees since the fall. One despised his home while the other loved it all. The first was tired and weary, lurking in the dark shadows, sick of the sound of waves that infuriated his old brow. He shunned the old dull mountains, their rigid, unchanging forms, and the icy air that stung his skin, piercing like a hundred thorns. The second stood strong and proud, embracing the sunshine and breeze. He reveled in the sound of waves, a symphony of nature's keys. He savored the scenic landscape, a picture-perfect sight to behold. The fluffy clouds, the deep blue lakes, and the mountains mighty and bold. He loved his home, savoring its beauty, his heart at peace with his birth. Each moment treasured in his heart, a cherished haven, beauty of this earth. The Paradox of the Sea. Elegant, elegant creatures drift smoothly within the current. Twin suns blazing with color pulse up and down. But a darker side lies beyond. With tentacles of flame, brands of fire pulled from the pit, burn searing flesh with whips like lethal weapons. But this, too, is beauty. Colors flash brightly, a comet lighting the night sky, shining through, piercing the abyss, a beacon of hope. The dangers are venom, inconspicuous but violent. But does this eclipse its pure beauty? My dog. I came home from school, my arms full of folders, and was given my usual greeting. Paws on my shoulders, I stared into his gleaming marble eyes. At maximum zoom-in, I imagined for a moment that he was human. How was your day, he asked, inviting me to play. But the excitement in his pant told me that it was a bitter chant. Whatever you do, don't go in the kitchen. I shifted my position. Oh, dog, what did you do? I took one step, then two, and turned into our kitchen just new. Please don't be mad, I could hear his flapping tongue add, for the sight made me freeze, and I went weak in my knees. Splotches of fur caked with dirt, over the oven they had been spurt. And there in the corner, one of my t-shirts. Ripped and stained brown, I almost fell down. But I sighed as I listened to his cries of apology, and then I decided to blame his biology.
outcast of the ocean. He is the chameleon of the sea, veiled from the sun by ocean waters, engulfed in beautiful blossom-like suckers, covered in hues of cobalt, saffron, and amber. On his tentacles he will crawl all the days of his life, through rough waters speckled by the stars of the sea. Glowing algae flows round him, shielding him from the world above. He is a mirage of colors in the deep, dark depths, lost to all mankind. Without comrades, he remains in the abyss. He is the outcast of the sea, lurking alone till the end of his days. The Bagel Shop. Car tires scrape on grimy wet streets. Sleepy drivers in traffic grumble. Morning garbage trucks rumble. Workers trudge on tired feet. Customers come in by the hour. Warm air flows from the glowing ovens. Sweet bread baking by the dozen, prepared with care and much flour. Raisin bran and sesame treats, smothered in honey, <coughs> schmear or butter. Smoth smells that cause hearts to flutter gather early risers to empty seats. Seated at the deep blue tables with hot coffee warming cold hands, once sleepy minds now full of demands, eager to eat fresh baked bagels. Though cold rains freely out the door, nothing disturbs the morning peace. Breakfast in paper shining with grease. Newly warmed hearts walk out the store. Depth perceptions. Flickering rings spread across the liquid window, crashing against filmy lily pads like minute mountain ranges, tangling a woven web on ever-changing glass. Flashing sun rays glow beneath the sheet of crystal blue. Orange, pulsing ripple creatures wriggle around the cratered surface, flutter about in raindrop chaos, darting through an intricate dance. While coy circle, a maiden, mourning, one outside their watery world, flings down a trinket underneath a weeping sky. Amidst its tears, her treasure vanishes, sinking in a stone-black grave. No one knows her secrets but the fish. But the fish all hide in shadows, disregard the sobs of this heartbroken lass. Her torments are forgotten. None comes to wipe away her tears. And then this maiden in distress kneels down beside the pond. Lost in thought, she reaches down to skim the water with a hand. And then, perhaps one fearless fish emerges, gives that hand a kiss.
are going to invite you to participate with us. Instead of a sing-along, we have a move-along. So in the elementary music classroom, some of the classical music they're first exposed to involves choreographed movement. And so in this move it, we are going to ask you to do it with us, but you can stay in your seats. This is essentially head, shoulders, knees, and toes but a little more complicated. So we'll show you some of the moves so you don't get too nervous. So you'll mirror them. So students lift your right arms, this will be your left arm. So we'll, we'll do a practice round before you participate. So follow along with them, they are the teachers today. So are you ready? Here's some of the moves. Head, shoulders, knees, toes, head, shoulders, knees, toes, knees. And then we do the other side. So other hand, ready, go, head, shoulders, knees, toes, head, shoulders, knees, toes, knees. Sometimes it's both arms, ready? Head, shoulders, knees, toes, head, shoulders, knees, toes, knees. And then we add a little change. So see if you can follow, ready? So your right arm, their left arm, ready? And head, cross, knees, toes, head, cross, knees, toes, knees. And each time we get a little more complicated. So I hope you enjoy feeling the excitement of this piece of music through movement. Thank you. 
Flightless feathers. Thoughts locked inside and flitting about, trapped in their cage and wanting out. Constant chirps and flurries of feathers. They are untamed thoughts, abrupt like the weather. They tumble about in two-toned tessellations, held back by the tongue, these words of innovation. What you hear will most often be altered, delivered in hesitance and often with falter. What could you find if you truly listened? Spirited chickadees or the sp silky wings of ravens? What trills in the mind wants to be known, the captives aching to be free and find their home. Roger Federer. The stadium held its breath as the man stepped up to the line. A magician in this game whose legacy would stand the test of time. The stadium held its breath as he leaned forward, a steady stance, strong like a tree's mighty roots, nimble like a deer's graceful prance. The stadium held its breath as his collared white shirt gleamed, a shining light in the darkness, just as he once dreamed. The stadium held its breath as he moved with pristine grace, a swan soaring across the barren sky, each step a calculated pace. The stadium held its breath as they watched the man in awe, and slowly they realized it was no mere man they saw. An obituary, the lost Sementasses. Arrived November 30th, gone December 1st, lived in the cupboard, died on the kitchen floor. Our mugs, our teacups, cherished friends we held dear, fallen brothers, meaningless victims of the cold, hard ground, gone with a heart-wrenching sound. We fondly remember your glorious colors, fiery reds, icy blues, soft yellows, verdant greens. How we long to watch you shimmer in the midnight glow, partners in crime when sleep wouldn't come, holding a hot drink to lull us to bed. Your range of sizes from I'm addicted to caffeine to I'm on a diet with grand variations between. We remember the short-lived echo of trying to stack you straight, trying and failing and failing again, one on top of the other, a game of reverse Jenga. You never stood straight. You were determined to be the leaning tower of Pisa, always standing out of kilter. How stupid your deaths, so preventable. One slip and there you went, in a slow-mo crash, over and over. Hands rushed to catch you, faces flooded with terror. The murderer cried, I didn't mean to. Was your demise your fault, your peculiar shape, unwillingness to stack neatly, or that you were placed so topsy-turvy? Final rest. With cold weather approaching and the days continually fleeting, the exhausted brown bear knew that hibernation was more imminent than ever. He lifted his head and gazed upon the decorated sky above, a majestic painting full of crimson orange hues. Then, with his stomach full and his old heart content, he stared at the misty trees, sensing that this slumber, this rest, was going to be his last.
<clears throat> the moment before, my attention was averted by a small sound to the books tipping off the table. A coffee cup placed atop the mound made the stack unstable. The bright blue cup filled to the brim slowly began to jostle. Outlook of this tragedy looked grim as the tower began to topple. The time slowed down as I leapt with a bound. Books plummeted from their place. They opened their wings on their descent to the ground. A bleak grief flooded my face. Droplets of coffee scouted out in a thrill over the innocent prey. The book's top feathers soaked from the spill. Pages sogged like damp clay. I stood looking at the books all sodden, annoyed things went this way. When cleaning up the mess, all downtrodden, I remember it's just not my day. Crowded Refuge, a story of a place that had no light, a dark world, cold, brutal, meaningless. But within all that, a sliver of hope, a pond swarming with frogs and ducks, lavish with wa water lilies, a beacon of light, a lamp in the dark room. Daily I went there to scurry away from the stress of my life, to remember my reason for living. One day I went to the pond to gaze at its waters alive with lilies. A sign was there, construction zone, it said. My heart stopped. This pond was my refuge. Why would they strip it away? Now I travel by structures, gray, dull, expressionless, stabbed by sharp pains of grief. While memories that I cherished of beauty that once thrived give me a dream for the world, a place where light can shine in the darkness and hope can still bloom amidst the chaos. Streams of dreams. There she dances, a symphony in the sky. Harmony in space, enchanting the eye. There she flows, a cosmic river of light, cascading through the dark shadows of night. There she twirls, a ribbon through the void, meant to share beauty, meant to be enjoyed. There she surges, a vibrant ocean wave. All can behold her, a knight or a knave. There she glides, a gentle prismatic gale, sending hope to the broken, giving color to the pale. There she soars, strands of ethereal dreams. Her luster is resplendent, shadows fear her gleam. There she floats, a stream of stardust. Her virtue is abundant, her light is robust. There she glitters, a constellation of hope, relief for the oppressed who can no longer cope. There she arises, don't you dare ignore her. You'll miss all her beauty, only catch a blur. She may never return with her marvelous splendor, and you'll be left in the darkness forever. A loyal friend. The dog is a servant of the household, offering comfort in difficult, difficult spells. When days are quite too bold, it speaks kindly, never rebels. The dog is a companion of the household. It never leaves, always by your side obeying every command told, never ignoring its owner's call and cry. The dog is a guardian of the household, conserving the treasure its owners bestow. With a loving lick, slick and cold, the boy is safe, safe to grow. The dog is a member of the household, for when its task is done and story unfolds, it never wavered, hard glimmering, pure gold. A devoted dog, its legacy forever composed.
Our, our, sol our soloist, check. Our soloist for this next song is Max Schimmelbusch. By yon bonny banks and by yon bonny breeze, where the sun shines bright on the clamant, when me and me true love wed ever wants to gay on the bonny bonny banks of Loch Lomond. Die, 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 die
battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle, yes, the battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, 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 Joshua the battle of Jericho, the battle was from Tumble and Joshua fit the battle, yes, the battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle, yes, the battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Scamperer's treasure, gleaming in the glorious rays, a furry little creature should amaze. His bushy tail, a fiery flare, cascading flawlessly in the air. His fur vibrant amongst the glade, shimmering hues of ginger and jade. His eyes like ink drops in the night, his whiskers like spears at first sight. Sharp as blades with pointed tips, the squirrel's claws form firm grips. Clasping to the shroom with ease, he glances at a nut to seize. Amidst the thicket, a nut so fair, with hues of amber, rich and rare, a glossy sheen, an immaculate shade, its hazel shells so perfectly made. With nimble feet and quickened pace, he darts and weaves with effortless grace. Through thorny shrubs, he perseveres, until the nut he finally nears, his nose a twitching, his eyes aglow, as he bites down on the prize, just so. Success is taste, a welcome treat, a ripened acorn so tender and sweet. world beyond. I run wild, breezes propelling me forward. Shore grants a gift of clean, crisp air. Yet every day of contemplation over the vast sea only leads me in unexplainable awe. A gray ocean, arrestingly brilliant, an aquatic void abounding with swells of gray and blue. What calls me there, promising a better domain? Beyond the trees with hanging leaves and seacoast cushion of dirt and sturdy pebbles, even beyond the expanse's mighty pondering depths, there is a world, one full of darkness, overshadowed by an ashen sky. What calls me there, promising a better domain? For here, this province I pursue, by the waters with coolness and west, is to step into a world of greater worth, gray, Somehow brilliant, an aquatic void ab abounding with swells of gray and blue. Breezes propel me forward. I ran wild. Amidst wildflowers, white wispy clouds stray across the vast cerulean sky. A delicate breeze stirs the emerald green meadow. 
Through the ocean of foliage, I drift, like a wilted rose amidst wildflowers. An alluring island of deep indigos and muddled amethyst arrests my gaze. The aroma of lavender whisks me away in a whirlwind of nostalgia. Memories rich and bright swim in my head like colorful fish. A girl frolicked as the sun shone down, its rays gleaming on that lavender bush. Delicate little fingers plucked a stem and gingerly placed it on her bedside. But seasons changed, leaves fluttered, and summer was veiled by fall. That little girl, now a woman, neglected the lavender's value. As these thoughts twirl like little dancers in my head, I tug at a head of lavender. Its stalk yields to my gentle pull. Lavender in hand, I look up, sunshine softly tickling my skin. I breathe in the deep blue sky, bask in the warmth, and smile.
Well, I trust that the experience tonight, uh, the experience of beauty this evening has arrested your attention, stimulated your desires, and provoked delight. If the beauty in this world reflects the nature and character of God, then we know that this evening is just a tiny taste of the joy that we will experience in his presence forever. A couple of instructions before we move out to the lobby where you can enjoy our annual student art show. Uh, parents of kindergarten through seventh grade students, please find your children uh, after uh, I finish speaking and do your best to supervise them as well as you can during the art show. Um, you can take pictures of the art, but please don't touch. Some student artwork is available for purchase. You can talk to Mrs. Meir if you would like to buy anything. Uh, and don't forget to grab a copy of the, our student art magazine. Um, I think there might only be enough for one copy per family, so uh, if someone else in your family already has a copy, leave them for someone else. And lastly, we invited uh, our newly admitted families to this event, and we have about 20 amazing new families here this evening who are joining St. Stephen's Academy and whose children will start here in the fall. So as you meet and talk to people, out in the art show, please give our new families a warm welcome and let them know how excited we are to have them as part of our community. Thank you again for being here and enjoy the rest of your evening.